This is the Praise Charts tutorial for Multitracks and the software host Digital Performer. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm David Bauer and I've created a template here that we can use to demonstrate how to use multitrack files within Digital Performer. Let's go ahead and open up the template that I've created. And inside this template, I've already created tracks for the audio files so we can easily drop those onto the timeline. A couple of things you want to do first in DP and really any software host is kind of get some things set up and uh, get the file ready to accept the audio tracks as you import them in. Uh, if you notice up here on the top, I've got places for the track mix, the piano, the bass, kit, a couple electric guitars, an acoustic track, and uh, also the click track. These are also mirrored down here on that bottom section called the sequencer window. And you'll see when we import the audio files, uh, the actual waveforms of those audio tracks. So right now, this is still a template without a name. Let's go ahead and save this as I'm going to use the song Glory to God Forever by Steve Fee just for demonstration purposes. So inside the folder I'm working in, let's go ahead and create a new folder. And let's call this Glory to God Forever. So you can see now I've got a folder created. Now let's create an actual session. Glory to God Forever. Now inside the folder I've got Glory to God Forever is the session name. One more thing I want to do here is set the tempo. So in order to set the tempo, I want to get into the multi-track files that were downloaded and see what the tempo is so I can set that. And what I'm going to do in DP is actually hide it by hitting Command H. And I can close this window. The downloaded files that come for multi-tracks are in the form of a zip file. If you unpack the zip file, inside that folder is this smaller folder which has all the audio files associated with the original key, in this case, the key of B. So glancing through here, I see this is what I'm going to have for Glory to God Forever. I have an acoustic guitar track, a bass, the clicking cues track, and in this track right here, you'll notice there's a number associated with click and cue. That 81 represents the tempo, which is 81 beats per minute. The other tracks associated here are a couple electric guitar tracks. Uh, you'll see the kit, piano, and the track mix. The MP3s that are called full mix represent essentially a full accompaniment mix of all these tracks together. So if you want to hear the full thing and use it much like an accompaniment track, this would be the one you want to use. So let's go ahead and get back into DP. I can scan through my programs here and bring DP back to the surface. And let me bounce back here and I want to get this folder up here so I can grab it. So what we're going to do is take each of these tracks one by one and drop them onto the timeline. But before I do one thing, let's set the tempo. So right now the tempo is not locked down to anything uh, specific, but it is set right now at 120 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and highlight that. I hit 81. Now the timeline is set to 81 beats per minute. If I want to lock that down, which I always do, let's go ahead and, and click right here on the conductor track, just in the first measure. The simplest way to change the tempo or lock it down is to right mouse click when you're in the region here and hit change tempo. We know that we want to set it to 81 beats per minute, so we highlight the value here in this window where it says Tempo and hit OK. Now it's on the conductor track set to 81 beats per minute. So any of these audio files that I bring into the timeline are going to lock down to the measures and beats. Uh, everything will be tied together. So let's start dragging and dropping these tracks. So we can start with the acoustic guitar. So we're going to drag and drop him there on the first bar. And we can just kind of keep doing this. It will take just a couple minutes to do this. And as these are coming in, they are being converted to whatever file format you have Digital Performer set to. In my case, I think all of my files turn into AIF audio files. 
So the MP3 conversion is being changed from uh, an MP3 to an AIF file when it's being imported. I'm going to save this file now that it's done by hitting Command S and I'm ready to hit play so let's hear the track. One, two, three, guitar, four, Another way to get the mixer is to hit Shift M really quick, and that will bring your mixer right on the top if it's a detached window. Uh, some mixers will be actually locked into your window set. I just happen to have it free floating over here. I'm going to hit play again so we can continue listening to the track. This also has a narrow view right now, so I will change this to the regular expanded view by turning narrow view on. Now you can hear if I start muting these tracks, this is basically just the guitar mix, some of the track mix, piano, uh, without the bass and drums. Or you can solo these up as you like. Okay, that's the simplest way to get multi-track files playing inside Digital Performer. But let's go a couple extra steps. First of all, I'm going to save the file. Let's say I want to make a click track. I'm simply going to take the click track itself and pan it all the way to the left and all the other tracks would be panned to the right side. So this is a fast way to make kind of our conventional click tracks. We have a click on the left channel and all the audio files on the right or the audio track. Okay, to take full advantage of multi-tracks, I'm going to double click each one of these, by the way, and make these centered. Let's make these stereo tracks again. Let's say I want to take advantage of my multi-track uh, output capabilities working with DP and my audio interface. Over here in the top left window you can see that right now the output chain is set to analog 1 2 which is essentially my um, left and right stereo output that monitors through my speakers if I click on this and I go to new stereo bundle this will give me all of the uh, device outputs that are available for my particular audio interface your interface may look a little bit different Typically, if it's a FireWire or USB audio interface, depending on the inputs and outputs, uh, you'll have uh, four, maybe eight separate analog outputs and some digital outputs that you can use. In my case, the way I usually run tracks for me is I will run, uh, let's say we want to run the entire mix out on uh, mix one and two. So I can leave all of these tracks except for the click, all coming through my main stereo mix. So I'm going to utilize now three audio channels so I can isolate the click out of that mix. How do I do that? So with the click channel, I'm going to make this uh, the way I would use it is I want to have the click coming out channel 8 only. Okay, so the way I do that is I set my analog output to the stereo pair 7-8 and then if I get my mixer back up here over here in the click channel I know 7 is left and 8 is right I'm going to pan that click over all the way to channel 8 so if I were to play this file now you will not hear the click because the click is actually being routed through my output number 8 on my hardware interface, but the rest of the track mix is coming through my main audio mix. You could take it one step further. Let's say we want to put the drum kit on its own stereo pair, and depending on your audio system with your church or your uh, worship venue, you may want to send more than just 
a stereo mix and a click to your front of house if you want to separate your drum kit for example you may want to set your drum kit to go out the second pair which would be analog three and four if I hit play now you'll see that the kit is still playing but it's playing through an output that I can't hear in my main uh, speakers what you're listening to when I play these tracks is just output one and two but if you had this hooked up into a multi-track situation um, into a mixer that can accept more than just uh, one or two channels at a time you would hear these different audio signals coming in that is the simplest way to use multi-track audio files um, another really cool thing is because if I zoom in here on the sequence window uh, because these tracks are locked down to um, a timeline all of the uh, all the audio files are lined up together and you want to make sure in every case that you take your audio files and make sure they're all lined up together on the same exact starting point and then down the line everything will line up perfectly if you have any questions be sure and email us at support at praisecharts.com I'm David Bauer and have a great time using praise charts multi-tracks